Blue Dolphin here, and we're going to be covering the Open Vast Try Hack Me Room Task 3 How to Install. Wow, let's get into it. Jumping right into things here, there's three ways we can install Open Vast. Firstly, we can use the Kali Open Vast repositories. The links will be down in the video below. Secondly, we can install from a source. Thirdly, we can run from Docker. So I'm going to attempt to install and run Greenbone and OpenVAS using the Kali OpenVAS repositories. Just a little backstory while I'm doing this is that Greenbone is the vulnerability management database and web portal. And OpenVAS is the vulnerability scanner that you can use in conjunction with Greenbone in order to take your scan results and aggregate them and visualize them. Okay, how I like to start these searches is with a open VAS, how to install. Simple Google search here. We're gonna go over to linuxhint.com and it's gonna tell us what to do. And bear in mind, if jumping just right into the steps here, if your system's already updated, obviously skip this step and just go down to installing OpenVAST with just the standard install command and literally OpenVAST. It doesn't get any more simple than that. It will take a little bit to download. So after running the command, I can see that it was unable to fetch some archives, which was interesting, but I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right over and run sudo greenbone vulnerability management setup and see if we can skip these errors and still have a successful deployment. All right, so it obviously didn't work because sudo gvm setup didn't work. So that's fine. What we're going to do is actually try running the above command, the install open vast, and we're gonna call the fix missing flag and see if this helps to fix the packages. All right, I think I may have things working. Uh, it doesn't look like it. So I'm actually trying a totally different distro to see if this is gonna help. Um, it's just an older version of distro, totally separate box and we'll see if this works fingers crossed all right things are looking pretty good here and again all i did was switch to a different vm with an older version of kali linux and i didn't even do an update i just installed openvast and it looks like it's working we're getting further along so that's great and it should be finished any moment now okay so it looks like it finished and again remember when we install openvast we now have to set up the web portal. So OpenVAS is the scanner and now we need the web portal and the database which together act as the vulnerability management platform or center for us. So the way we'll set this up is just by simply calling sudo gvm which of course stands for greenbone vulnerability management dash setup and we can see here it's starting up post GreeSQL service so you if you do run into any issues here you may in fact need to update your SQL databases or install them. We can also see that our feeds here are being called in. So this is important. We have to note a couple things here. So first we have our password. So this is the password we're gonna to need to log into our instance. And of course you can change it once you're logged in. Secondly, is the GVM feed. So this is the Greenbone vulnerability management feed. So this is a feed of common vulnerabilities and exploits and the scoring systems that go with them. Next, we have the MVT. So again, this is part of the feed and the feed is where we get all our vulnerabilities from, from to fill our database to try and find those matches. This is the network vulnerability test feed, the NVT. And this is the community feed. Then it looks like we have Greenbone community feed servers and that's it. So this should be installed. Looks like it's still working. All right, this should finish any moment now. And when it does, we're just gonna type sudo gvm start. And then from there, we should have our HTTP portal that we can connect to. So it looks like it finally finished and you can see we have our password here. And this is for the admin user. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm just gonna jump over to the terminal here and make sure it's pasted. It's the same as what we saw before. That's perfect. You can see it says you can now run GVM 
check setup to make sure everything is correctly configured. So let's give that a shot here and we'll just do GVM dash check setup. And it says we have to run it as root, not a problem. We'll run as root. And you can see, let's take a look at what it's doing here. So step one, it's checking the open vast scanner and it's present version 21. It's also checking the server certificate authority and confirming that their certificate is indeed present. And if we want, we can go take a quick look at that, which why not? Copying the path. We'll just go ahead and cat this certificate file out. And there it is, there's our certificate. Okay, cool, and that's stored in varlib gvm, ca server cert, awesome. Okay, so during step one, it looks like it's also checking the permissions of the open vas library under var, and it says gvm owns all files. It also does a check for a Redis server, which is very cool. We can see here it does a check to make sure it's using the Redis server socket. It checks that the Redis server is listening on the socket. It checks the configuration, permissions. Then it goes on to check the NVT collection, which is in varlib open vast plugins. And look at this, it contains one, 10, wow, 101,000 NVTs. That's amazing. You can also see it's checking that the obsolete Redis database has been removed. Very cool, no old database to report here. Next, it checks the GVMD manager. So this is the Greenbone vulnerability management database, I think is what the D stands for. And you can see it's present. There's a check for the client certificate. And step four, it checks the data. So it's checking the SCAP. So if you don't know, SCAP stands for Security Content Automation Protocol. And it's a protocol that can be used for sharing this vulnerability management and measurement and evaluation of those vulnerabilities, that type of information with other systems. So very, very cool. Then you can see it's again confirming the cert. We have a check on the Postgre SQL database and server. Awesome, it looks like it's present and it does indeed have a user. It's then checking the GSA, which is the Greenbone Security Assistant. So this is the actual interface of the web portal. And it says that there is a secure memory pool already installed. It looks like we have our Greenbone Security Assistant. Now it's checking the Greenbone Vulnerability Management Services are up and running. And you can see it starts OpenVAS, GVMD, GSAD along the way. Step eight confirms our NMAP and SSH key gen requirements. Awesome. However, it does say warning could not find make since binary LSC credential. And it looks like it's a package for Microsoft Window. Package. Interesting, it says LSC credential package. Generation will not work for Microsoft Windows. Well, I'm not sure what an LSC credential package is. If you know, no. excuse me, uh, please comment down below. Now it says it's suggesting we install this. I'm not gonna worry about that. Looks like things are coming along smoothly here. So all the checks cleared, which is great. What we're going to do is now actually finish the installation. And the way we're gonna do this is just by starting our Greenbone vulnerability management system by doing sudo gvm start. And it's already running, wonderful. So we should be able to see this at port, uh, I think it's 9293. I'm gonna take a guess. So let's go to our local, local host first without even putting in a port just to see what comes up. Oh, there we go. We have our Greenbone security system. Wonderful. So we'll input our name of admin. We'll grab our password, which we stored in a terminal session here. We'll input this password and unfortunately it says login failed. I think there's some white space. I'm really hoping that's the case. All right, unfortunately it looks like that something else is going on. So what I'm gonna have to do is manually reset this password by using, oh, there it looks like we're in, awesome. Okay, so we're in. This, the first thing we're, I guess we're gonna wanna do is really just change that username. 
Of course, this does conclude this module in Try Hack Me. I am going to, however, just change the admin password. And I think we can do that easily by permission to edit user denied. Oh, so we have to create a new account. Okay, no big deal. I'll do that in the next video. But if we jump over to the Try Hack Me page here, this should conclude the installation portion of this challenge. And I guess we could have just used admin admin to log in, but um, I don't know. I don't know about that. Awesome. Well, that concludes this. So I'm going to go ahead and click correct answer here and I'll see everyone in the next video.